Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. La Pianiste, The Piano Teacher Movie Thoughts. I should start by saying that I consider every relationship in life, whether long-term or short-term, family, friend, romantic, two people or more than two people, all of them to have a dominant party and a submissive party. And they can change place, sometimes even in the space of a single conversation. And the dominant and submissive can try to swap roles if two parties go for both go for being dominant there's going to be an open stroll I'm not saying necessarily physically but they are going to you know butt heads verbally or just like with with stairs or the like it's it's you know this is basically what it is what, what happens when there are two alpha males in a single group now if both try to be submissive sooner or later one of them becomes the dominant whether they want to or not. Nature abhors a vacuum and one way or another it will be resolved. And this, you know, I, I feel that that is, that relates very much to the movie, not to, you know, pat myself on the back or anything. The, a lot of it is that Erica wants to be lower, even the lowest she can be, just to get it out of her system, just to see that life doesn't end when you when you are less than perfect. And you know, at first Walter idolizes her. He's you know, at, at first Excuse me. At first, it isn't entirely. We, we don't necessarily fully realize that he is truly obsessed with her. And but but yeah, and you know, the, part of the idolizing is that she is far greater than he is in talent on on the scale of professional piano playing. Yeah. He, she is far higher than he is currently and you know is in in his eyes and in her eyes as well she considers him far beneath her so at first they agree on the role of both of them the, the roles of both of them but he desperately wants to rise to her level to you know for her to embrace him and she she can see that and she does want an equal so she you know gradually trains him to rise to her level and gradually you know yeah l lets him in she you know there's a lot that he has to do to prove himself to her and after all of his efforts you know she truly lowers her guard and he sees that she is not you know more than human which you know that's that's what being in love and and or idolize I idolizing someone is that you see them as just yeah more than human larger than life and not only does you know does he see this but in fact he when someone falls off that pedestal it can be a really long you know steep fall and he ends up thinking that she is subhuman because of these sexual desires that she has the the extent 
of her sadomasochism, which, you know, we, he may not, at least before they meet, particularly be sadomasochistic. He, he keeps suggesting that, you know, basically a typical romantic encounter, you know, take a few, you know, take a few hours off. We will, you know, go have fun. Come on, let's go somewhere this weekend. You know, he's not saying that, you know, we should do this really, you know. I don't consider sexual, let's go with perversion. I, I don't find, I don't see it as a bad thing. I Abusive relationships are bad, but that is not Sexual perversion does not mean abuse, nor does abuse mean sexual perversion. They can coexist, but they won't necessarily. But, yeah, it... Basically... Crap, lost my train of thought. Her sexual perversion... You know, he, yeah, he doesn't, what he is suggesting does not, or isn't readily apparently sexual perversions. He seems to be content to just be with her. And, yeah, the, the, when, so, so, yeah, when he sees this, yeah, she, she falls so far in his view you know it's the madonna horror complex basically she is either completely pure or she is despicable to him and because he is emotionally unstable as she is he becomes violent towards this again as he sees it's subhuman who he already has a deeply involved relationship with, which is already somewhat colored by... I don't know if say the massive is. Submissive and dominant. You know, rather, their, their tryst in the bathroom is not sadomasochistic, but there is a clear dominant submissive kind of, you know, yeah, that that is very much going on there. And the, so, so yeah, he, you know, he becomes violent towards her, where others, you know, bec in part because of this deeply involved relationship and between, you know, he is still obsessed with her. We, we see that he, even after the, you know, he, he leaves her at, you know, when, when, after he's read the letter. He, you know, he leaves her after the, you know, she, she meets him after the, the hockey game. And after their encounter there, he sends her away. But then he still, he still comes up to her apartment that night, you know, there's, yeah, he continues to be obsessed with her, and this is, you know, where, where others might have just abandoned her rather than become destructive towards her. Now, the, you know, as he, when he does become genuinely violent against her, you know, he's forcing onto her some of what, you know, what was in the letter. That, you know, he even says that, is this not how you, you know, how you expected it to be, you know. And there's there's talk of who whose rules are we playing by. And the, up until then, up until his 
reading the letter. She had been the dominant one quite consistently, and both both in their relationship and in relate, you know, when when dealing with her her own sadomasochism, where yeah, to you know, with her own, it, it is generally sadomasochism. You know, she yeah, she she cuts herself, and yeah, so the the fact that he then becomes the dominant one is in part because of you know in her fantasies she is the submissive and as I already mentioned this is you know she she wants to lower herself to see that life doesn't end and her daily life is so controlled in part by herself but also her mother where we see in the opening that the rare adventure of buying an expensive dress you know her mother's dominance and abuse you know flares up she destroys this item that brought Erica out of her so controlled life but yeah to delve deeper into you know she she cuts herself she in yeah she cuts her vagina and it's clear from her reaction so subdued in part that she she's scared of being caught and she she's doing this in their apartment this is not a yeah you know she is, there's there's there is a real chance of being caught and at the same time it shows that this is how far she has already pushed it it's it's like with with drugs it's it's an addiction to her because she is not fully getting the satisfaction and the you know again this has nothing to do with the fact that it's, you know, sadomasochism, this is because it's because she can't live it out, you know, and sometimes sexual perversion can arise from, you know, a, a suppressed sexuality, but that doesn't mean that it necessarily is or will be or will remain a an, an addiction or a you know a an abusive relationship but yeah that's that's how far she's pushed it she can she can cut herself in in such a tender spot to where she bleeds and I find that that when when we see how much blood there is in the tub you know we see it running down the 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 sides of the tub and already there it's it's really unpleasant but when we see as she rinses it out we see just how much blood that is where it really hits you i i find and and yeah this is you know she has she's cut herself so many times before she has harmed herself so many times before that she has yeah she that's where she has has gotten to and this also is in part why she pushes Walter so far she there's a few mentions of how far you can push a man and get away with it you know and he again we, we don't think about how serious that is we we don't expect him to get violent the first time he says that in the bathroom we yeah it's just you know he's he's frustrated and in that situation understandably so we we don't at that time expect for him to actually yeah hurt her but that again is that is where the 
abusive and bullying relationships end up. The we do only see the sex lives of the of of Eric and Walter, but unless the you know the various students and other professors we see. I, I could imagine that they have a healthier sex life because they are not as detached. We see that. We see them more... Yeah, she's, she's very distant. And that is where, you know, she's... Yeah, she, she tolerates the, you know, her, her life. She does not enjoy it where, you know, yeah, the, the others, you know, she is the one person who tries to keep Walter out of getting in and, and really, you know, criticizes his, yeah, his, his efforts at the, you know, at, at the exam. Now... I suppose, yeah, I've, I've already somewhat touched upon this, but just to, to really clarify, it would have been so easy for this movie to say that, you know, this kind of submissive dominant relationship is inherently abusive, but it never comes across like that. You know, these these are abusive people and thus their sex is informed by that now yeah so you know people who are comfortable with themselves with their partners and their sexuality have healthy relationships be it you know submissive and dominant or otherwise now the when you know she she sees the you know Anna you know with with the you know she's she's clearly anxious about this whole you know she's she's very scared and you know because of all this pressure the the pressure put on her by her mother by Erica yeah, and the you know, her mother even she she spells it out. There is the the this is all she has. She all she has is the talent. She's not pretty enough. She doesn't have friends. This is all that she has. And we have sacrificed. Excuse me. We. She has sacrificed, you know, she, and, and you know, she, she practices eight hours a day. It's not how many hours, it's the result. You know, just no, no mercy, no relent, relenting of just, and yeah, all this anxiety, and Walter sees this, this anxiety, and you know, within seconds of them, you know, you know, he he sits down near, you know, next to her, and he makes her laugh. You know, with, within seconds, and that we see that he is charming. It's not only with Erica, you know, he's charming in general. You know, he, without like, you know, he, when we first see him, when they first meet him, Erica and her mother, you know, they without anything. They just close the elevator, take it up. They could easily have waited for him. There was room in the elevator, there was time. They had clearly seen him. No, nothing. And and he, you know, briefly, he's not gonna get, he's gonna, not gonna be deterred by that. So he runs up and like he reaches the floors as they do. So it's like, you you didn't slow me down. Just, just so you know, you didn't slow me down. And yeah, the, you know, she and and then you know he, he tries to you know introduce himself and then you know the door opens oh hi aunt 
you know, I, I love that little reveal. And again, you know, still, of course, Erica and her mother, they don't give at all. But yeah, if you if you if you always treat people as below you, sooner or later you're going to you know, someone someone you've tried to push beneath you is actually going to be someone who has like you know I mean, at first, we don't even know he's going to the, the recital as well, so, so the concert, yeah, the, the, as well, you know, so at first it's like, oh, they'll, they'll never see him again, oh, well, they're going to spend the next several hours with him, and he is the nephew of the host, so this could really go wrong, you know, but of course, you know, yeah, they, they still don't, Erica, refuses to give any. The, the only time she gives is in her relationship with Walter and her mother where the, you know, dominant submissive relationship changes. But, yeah, you know, we see he he's also charming with the two, you know, ice skaters. Um, yeah, they, you know, everybody else just rushes on to and the girls are like, what, you know, it's like, is this is this happening? Are they, you know, that is, that is tremendously rude. And he, you know, talks to them just for just a few seconds and they smile and laugh and walk away, you know, looking at him all, what a, what a sweet guy, you know, so charming. And again, it just, he's, he's a charming young guy, you know, so yeah, that's, that's very consistent. And yeah, she, you know, she is so so Anna is is you know he helps Anna calm down and it's clear that there might actually be you know and, and he sits next to her which also you know helps to really calm her down and it's like you know there's it's a practice thing he's not gonna be able to sit next to her in the actual you know, concert, but it's, it's sweet, it's, you know, what's the harm? It's, it's just practice, you know, but Erica sees that, and even though this is in part her own fault, because she pushed Anna so far, she, you know, we see her with her students, she is completely unforgiving, and yeah, she, she sees this, and it just, yeah, she, she, she can't stand it. She, she will not give Anna up to, give Walter up to Anna. And she, you know, it, it she doesn't do it immediately. At, at first, she's just getting out of there. And she, she's, you know, she goes by the, the coat. Yeah. You know, where where all the the coats are, no one else is going to be there. And she's just she you know we can see her, you know kind of kind of thinking about it and realizing, and okay so she go you know she she gets the idea she goes through the the various coats finds you know a, a scarf so that she can properly crush you know she again she has that down to a science. She she unwraps the paper towel with the the razor in it when she sits down by the tub, and we don't know how many times she's done that before, but clearly she knows exactly what she's doing. There's there's no shaking hands. There's no second. Th no, she knows exactly what she's doing, and so she crushes the glass and pours it into Anna's coat pocket and yeah this you know now it'll definitely be a while before Anna sees Walter in any kind of you know practice she, she's going to be recuperating for a while and she might have ruined this young woman's life and and there's you know in addition to getting to keep Walter to himself there's also a There's also this, the, the risk that this young woman is going to outdo Erica. She might become a concert pianist. 
if she keeps going and at a much younger age than Erica is now. And yeah, and, and by doing this, she ensures that the, you know, yeah, that, that this, that the failure of Anna is, yeah, in, ensured not only a, a threat. Now, and we also see that Walter, you know, he, he does have a healthy life outside of, you know, I actually, yeah, that his life outside of his relationship with her is actually healthy. You know, he's into sports, he enjoys the company of others rather than as her just tolerating it. And I think that the mother's drinking is very nicely done. At first, we just see, you know, she, at first she's just sitting there with a normal amount of, I, I don't, again, I'm not, I'm far from an expert in, in the, you know, I don't know if it's champagne or wine, but she, it appears to me that the amount of, let's say, wine in the glass is appropriate to the glass, and the glass is the right kind of glass for that sort of thing. So far, so good. But, you know, she, she first takes a, you know, she, she seems to be just taking a sip, which is, again, just how, how you do it. This is the proper way to do it. But then she, she keeps drinking and she, she empties the glass. And we see her do this, I think, three times overall. And there's also one of these times where she, you know, opens Erica's closet and pulls out all her clothes. It's, it's clear that this is a way that she hurts Erica for hurting her by not, not fully accepting the control and by Erica it doesn't appear that the mother has a job. It seems like she has retired which is again it's completely fair for her yeah and the mother has to sit at home all day just waiting for Erica because that is the only thing she, she only has Erica and then occasionally you know they they went to that place together with Walter's aunt so so there's that but Erica actually you know she Erica even plays with these other you know we don't know if they're professors or exactly but you know the three of them playing together which again that is not something that her mother can take part in so she she resents she resents Erica for still having a little bit of a life, which again is also part of the dress being destroyed. That is Erica trying to have a little bit more of a life. Now, I already mentioned in the review that there's a lot of silence in this, and I find that the silence of both the opening and closing credits is perfect. It again, you just, it doesn't, it doesn't try to force or, you know, yeah, force an emotion out of the audience. It just leaves us with it. And the, the silence is deafening because of what we have just seen or what we are now seeing, you know, it's absolutely perfect choice. Now, I also noted that a lot of times the there's a risk of being caught. This is mostly for Erica because several of these things she does by herself. You know, at the at the drive-in theater where she's clearly becoming aroused by them having sex and you know 
and yeah, then she relieves herself next to the car, and she is actually spotted by the guy and rushes off, you know, and her in the the porn shop. Yeah, you know, they if if she meets someone that she knows, you know, and and when she cuts herself in the bathroom, and several of these times she does kind of sort of get caught, but it just, she just barely gets away, like with the guy at the drive-in, and she does continue bleeding after cutting, but the mother just thinks that it's her period, and the, you know, so, so yeah, it, it, she keeps almost being caught, and they keep almost being caught, also, she and Walter in the bathroom, and in, you know, equipment room kind of thing with, you know, after the hockey game. And the, there's a real stark, you know, when, when they leave, when she leaves and just this, this blinding amount of white, it's, you know, all this, Snow or ice, I guess, yeah, when, when she leaves, and when he leaves the bathroom and back to this very orderly building, you know, this, this, and, and, and the bathroom itself is also in, in contrast, this is the kind of sexual encounter that you might expect in a sleazy bar, and where you can click, like, like, X-Men 2, when, Grace seduces the, the 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 man, and they go out and have them. that's the kind of bathroom that you expect this kind of encounter in. This kind of just yeah, you know. Again, they're they're not being subtle. Anyone could walk through the door, and yeah. So so there's a real. They keep toying with almost being caught. Now. I suppose that brings me to now at the very ending we again we see her actually before that briefly more about the you know his his growing obsession with her you know when she throws up he to him, that has to mean that that has to be about their sexual encounter. Has to be about either him or her or them together. It can't be something you know. Not every woman is comfortable with with that kind of thing. And he was very much in the control. I mean, he was. Yeah, he was. He was basically forcing it into her mouth and yeah not every woman is comfortable with that and that's not some you you can't expect every partner you have to just go well, that's that's something you talk about that's something where you're understanding this is the way to be healthy about it at least and to him that had you know and and then he says you must think that I'm disgusting to be throwing up because to, to him it has to be that and then he says you're the one who's disgusting you should rinse out your mouth and just yeah the you know and, and she cries don't don't look at please don't look and yeah it's yeah you know she she could be anxious she could just be you know, maybe she's doing too much, too too fast. You know, and and you know, not to, not to mention that the way he, you know, he just turned her down. She, you know, she might still be hurt by that. He can't expect her to just be completely okay after, you know, that that night. And when he genuinely, you know, he beats her and he rapes her. He, he blames the victim. He, he says, you know, 
some of this is your fault. And then, you know, if she tries to, to unlock her mother, just, you know, he's, she's scared. And, and it's not necessarily, you know, just, and then he comes back out and then he, you know, temper, his temper flares up again and he, why did you do that? I, I was calming down and then you just had to provoke me, you know, just, you know, ab abusive romantic partner 101. It's, and again, he, you know, he keeps pushing it onto her, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this and I shouldn't be doing this, but you're to blame here. You led me on and you had that, you know, you wrote that thing, you know, and really she, she, she moved too fast and she realizes that, you know, she's like, yeah, I, sh I shouldn't have just dumped it all like that. We should have, we should have talked about it. I understand that now. I'm sorry. Can we, you know, and she's actually being fairly, you know, that is a bit basically the way it should be approached at that point. But he has just, yeah, he, if maybe if she had been able to, which I'm not blaming her, but actually, no, even, even in that situation, even if they had gone through with it there in the, the equipment shed, he might still have been, yeah, been, been abusive, to, yeah, quite likely, because again, this, this is not, it's, it's not a healthy relationship, he's, He's obsessing over her and he's abusive towards her. The way, every, you know, every relationship in the movie is abusive in one way or another, to one extent or another. And again, that, that informs their sexuality as well. Now, the very ending, you know, she... We still see she's she's still got a bruise on her face from from him hitting her and kicking her. And I think it's noteworthy that no one asks. I mean, her mother knows where it's from, but nobody she she meets Anna, she meets Walter's I guess aunt and her husband, I think something like that. She, you know, Anna and her mother, nobody asks because it's not proper to. It's not, you know, and it appears that she hid it as well as she could. They don't ask because that's, I mean, in their opinion, she shouldn't have shown up with a bruise, but okay, she had to show up. It would have been worse if she hadn't showed up because she is the one plain and and her mother's you know you must be so proud of of your daughter why it's a school you know concert she's filling in for a student you know just nothing no yeah and she you know she she packs the the kitchen knife and she's she's staying out there she she hopes to see walter and it's not entirely clear if she's who the knife is going to be used on or if it's just for for threatening or you know him on her her on him either you know cutting or or actually you know actually cutting or just threatening but he shows up and he there's no sign of his abuse towards her it and it's it's like when he's with with the hockey team you know nothing only with her can we see that he is obsessing or and to, you know abusive towards her when it's her and they're alone or maybe her mother's also that that's it but the yeah, you know, he's there with his family and, you know, he says, oh, I'm looking forward to hearing you play. And just, yeah, there's, there's no sign of, and, and she, 
she looks like she's about to throw up. She's she's disgusted. And and she she stabs herself in in the shoulder as you know part of her self-destructive behavior and there may be a real desire towards suicide maybe to feel alive and you know and she leaves the concert hall even with you know minutes left before she's supposed to be up on stage and play and yeah it might be in part because she can't or she can't think of a way to escape her current life no matter how much worse it has gotten since the start of the film please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content